Hey, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is your old pal, CHH. We are capping off the Cameron 4Ks today with The Abyss. And I'm going to kind of do a ranking of these three if, like, maybe you want to get one of them and you kind of just want to get the one that you think is going to be, like, the best bang for your buck, that sort of thing. I'll give you my two cents on this. So uh, if you haven't checked it out earlier, we reviewed True Lies and we reviewed Aliens 4Ks. Um, I kind of want to go over some, I looked at the uh, feedback I had on the Aliens 4K, and it kind of goes along the lines of what I want to say with the Abyss 4K, but I'll hold that off for just a second. So the Abyss is part of the 1989 water, you know, deep dive movie. So there was three big movies that were water movies in 89. There was the Abyss, there was Deep Star 6, which was directed by Sean Cunningham, and then there was Leviathan with Peter Weller, great cast. Great cast in all three of the deep water movies. So 89 is kind of like this, you know, water year, which I think is really cool. The Abyss is one that I have never seen in any form of high definition ever before. The, the, the way I own the Abyss is a Japanese laser disc, which I know sounds bizarre, but that's just how I owned it. I have a Japanese laser disc of the Abyss. Getting to see this in high definition, I knew it was going to be a cool experience. Uh, and I gotta say, this one as well, I feel the same about this one in a lot of ways the way I feel about Aliens, that it was very happy. But again, I want to comment on the picture quality and stuff in a more detailed way in just a second. You know, when it comes to The Abyss, first I hated this movie. I really did. I say, and that's probably a strong word, I, I thought it was a horror movie. Like, I really thought it was a horror movie, especially the first time watching it. It's such a nail-biter, it's like this really anxiety-induced, deep-water movie. And uh, it's kind of interesting looking back at the abyss. I wonder if this is around the time where James Cameron got obsessed with uh, underwater stuff. I know they found the Titanic about four years before this movie came out. So I don't know if that kind of struck up his ideas of wanting to do a movie about the Titanic or whatnot. The attention to detail and the way the, the, you know, the deep sea stuff is done and all that. You can tell Cameron's got a real passion about that sort of thing. So I actually think that that, that makes the abyss a pretty authentic film. Uh, in terms of just, you know, Cameron's really into this, uh, was really into this idea. So the, the, the cast of The Abyss was really good. What I really like is in this movie is Ed Harris. Uh, he's kind of like, you know, our main character. And, you know, there's a love interest with between him and his wife, really, in this movie. But, you know, it doesn't over focus in the film. Like the main attraction here is all the deep sea stuff and what the hell is going on down here. And uh, it was it's a pretty remarkable film to watch on the big screen late at night with the lights off and um so i like the movie a lot it's far from my favorite cameron film but out of the three this was the one i was the most excited to see in high definition because i had not seen it in any form of definition above 480p really 360 i think but i don't know let's talk about the special features real quick we'll look at the back of this and go over it real quick First things first, it includes the 89 theatrical version and 31 minutes of extra footage in the 93 version all right, guys, on disc one, it's the 4K with the theatrical and special editions. On disc two, we get the Blu-ray with theatrical and special editions. And on disc three, it's the bonus features. We got a deep dive, a conversation with James Cameron, which was nice. The legend of the legacy of the abyss, excuse me, under pressure, making the abyss archives, stills and videos, including the shooting script, original treatment, storyboards, and more. This does have Dolby Vision and 7.1 Dolby Atmos. Again, for, for the record, you know, this has two versions of the film, the 90, 1989 theatrical and the 1993 special edition with 31 minutes of additional footage. I I prefer the theatrical. Like, I, I usually, nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, I've always, I'm always a theatrical guy. I don't like watching extra footage and stuff. Like, with the Aliens, I watch that one alone. Uh, the theatrical by itself, which I think is perfect. Um, I'm not saying I dislike the 1990 version, but... I just, I love the theatrical version of Aliens. It's my favorite version. So when it comes to the picture quality of this one, to me, it reminded me a lot of Aliens. But I want to talk about th this. I, I want to say this, too. This is really important. I paid for these, okay? I I'm not hating on anybody that got got sent these. I mean, who wouldn't want to be sent these movies, you know, for, uh, to review or talk about? So I did not get sent these. So I have literally nothing to gain here. Like, it doesn't matter to me whether you buy it or you don't. And I've been doing this so long, like, buying movies and, and collecting physical media that I'm way beyond the point of needing to justify buying stuff like this to convince you to do it. I, I could give a rat's ass, quite frankly. I just want to make that clear before I talk about this. There were some comments on the Aliens one of people claiming uh, they thought it was waxy. Now, if you watched it and that's how you feel, I, I can't... I can't argue with that. That's the what you, that's what you see, and that's the way you're perceiving it. 
respect. I totally get that. But I wonder if there are, uh, were a number of people that may assume it looks waxy because film grain is kind of taken out of it. Um, I just, I, I would never call the way either of these looked waxy. Not even remotely. As a matter of fact, I think picture quality wise, the one that looked the most remarkable, granted there's a lot of hues of blue between these two movies and even in True Lies with the nighttime stuff, I actually think The Abyss was the best looking one. Um, besides the fact that the effects were digital or optical, but you know, the effects are a lot more noticeable in the highest of definition. So they don't age the best, so to speak. Um, but you know, it is what it is, right? It's, it's whatever, you know? So the effects, even though they don't age the best going on the super high definition, I thought the picture quality of everything with Ed Harris and the, and the ship, the submarine and everything and the water scenes. I mean, this movie is visually stunning to watch in high definition. I, I didn't think that these looked waxy at all. Like, as a matter of fact, that'd be one of the last words I personally would use to describe that. Is Cameron taking grain out of these movies? P probably so. I mean, I don't think, I don't think that's something um, anybody would deny that he's not because, you know, these are shot on film uh, and film naturally has some grain to it. Um, if he's scrubbing that, that's fair. But I think the hysteria with these before these came out had me really, really worried. Granted, the worst out of the three, I'm going to say right off the bat, is True Lies because of the circumstances. Whether it's true what people were saying or not, I can't verify it, but people were saying that there was issues with the master for True Lies, so they did some of that stuff to kind of level things out. Don't know. Regardless of that, these are pretty close to being the highest of the three, but I would give The Abyss the absolute highest because uh, the visuals and the setting of the movie I just think is remarkable in high definition. So even though he scrubbed the film grain out of it, would I prefer he kept it in? Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm, I love that sort of thing too. I really do. But I would never call these waxy. So I don't, again, if, if you watch this and you perceive it that way, I wouldn't even bother or dare argue with you because that's what you're, that's the way you see it. And that's, that's totally fair. I'm just saying if you haven't seen these and you assume they look waxy because maybe Terminator 2 or something, I would not even remotely use the word waxy to describe these. As a matter of fact, these still look, these look really good. It's just, there's no film grain in these. So, I don't know. It's, these are not going to be my favorite 4Ks of the year, I'm sure. Those will probably go to boutique labels that put out movies that just, I mean, they literally, like, Vinegar Syndrome stuff usually looks so insane on 4K. Watch Navy Seals be the best looking 4K this year. But when it comes to these three, I would rank them number one, Abyss, then I would go Aliens, and then I would go uh, True Lies. So if you're going to pick up any of the three, um, it really just depends. Either one of these two, I personally don't think you would go wrong either way. The, all three of them have great special features. I think these two have the best. Um, but, but if you want to see like just the biggest, in my opinion, well, for me, the biggest jump is, is the Abyss because I haven't seen it. With Aliens, if you prefer the quadrilogy set look of this film, if you've seen this, again, I, I almost wouldn't even disagree with that, to be honest with you. I, I really wouldn't even disagree with that. I love the way the quadrilogy Blu-ray set of Aliens looks. I just really love the 4K version, too. Because of the setting and on the, on the underwater stuff, I mean, you really feel immersed with this film, and uh, everything just looks super high definition. I just... That's my only thing. I just, I just want to make it clear. I don't think these remo remotely look waxy at all. I just, he took the film grain out of it. So I just want to make sure I express myself if people are wondering if that's the case. There you go, guys. So I'm going to say that the, the Cameron Trio was not perfect, but it was a lot better than I anticipated it being. So if you want to see one, if you're going to pick up one of these, I definitely would go for either Aliens or The Abyss. Let me know your thoughts on these. Do you think that the Cameron Trio 4K run was a total flop? Was it... Uh, did it under deliver? Did it deliver to you? Or was it not as bad as you thought it was going to be? To me, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Never going to please 100% of the people 100% of the time. And I get that. I just don't think these are, these are as bad as some people are saying. But then again, you have to just see it for yourself. I recommend picking up either of these. I really do. But there it is, guys. I'm going to go with The Abyss at number one. Aliens at number two. And then True Lies at number three. And that does it for the Cameron 4K Trio, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below on these. This is your old pal, CHH. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Huge, giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind-the-scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon 
for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.